Hi, well, we're back outside of Micro Center again here. It's September 2022, and we're going to see what they have in terms of PCs and building your own and accessories for back to school. So hopefully we get a pretty good showing here. Should be good, right? Let's see. Hi, Callie, how you doing? Nice to talk to you again. Great, I'm good to see you too. <laughs> good. Well, today we want to see uh, what you guys got here for um, back to school. Okay. Maybe you want to throw out some ideas for you know some of my viewers. Sure. Um, I mean, if, if like you're going back to college, I think ITX would be a good idea because it's a nice small little computer, easy to carry with you or take in a car. Um, they're well, like with an Intel processor with integrated graphics or even some of the AMD ones, you don't even need a graphics card. So you could fit it nice and small in your car, take it with you to school. Uh, you can still do some light gaming on it because the newer processors are a lot stronger, but it's definitely good for like schoolwork and everything like that. Well, what would an ITX motherboard look like, for example? Um, they're pretty small. I think I have some over here. Sure. Yep. So I have one right here. It's a B660i uh, for Intel. That's for the newest 12th generation. Uh, for like light schoolwork, I'd probably say like an i5, like a 12400 or even 12600K. Uh, you can still game on a 12600K because it's overclockable. Um, the only thing is the B660 isn't necessarily clockable, but it would still be good for light gaming, like I said before. Uh, we do also have some of the older generation mini ITX boards as well, if you want like 11th gen. They're both still very good options. 12th gen is just newer, and it can use DDR5, which is the newest one. Um, I do also have some AMD options if you prefer AMD right over this way. We're expecting any day some new processors, right? Yeah, yeah. Later, later on in this month, yeah, they're releasing like the the 7000 series processors. But I do have AMD equivalent B550i right over here. Um, also a very good option. We have like the 5600G, 5700G. Um, they're really strong processors as well with integrated graphics, like I said, because with ITX, you can't necessarily fit like a, a decent gaming graphics card in there. Um, so it's mostly just for like schoolwork. Like I said, though, you can do some light gaming on them also. Okay. Now, what's the cost difference on something like that versus a full-size motherboard? So ITX boards are usually just a little bit more expensive. Okay. Um, not terribly more expensive, just a little bit more because it is a lot more technology and a smaller form factor. Um, but it's still reasonably affordable. And like I said, since you're not adding like a big graphics card, it does keep the cost down also. So it is a good option for back to school. Okay. What about memory and all of that? Does that stay the same? For AMD currently still uses DDR4. Intel, depending on the board, you can use DDR4 or DDR5. Um, AMD is going to be releasing their new product later on this month though. So those are going to start using DDR5. Okay. For the X670 okay. motherboard. But it'll be the same motherboard, just uh, what determines the DDR5, DDR4? It's the so motherboard. The, the motherboard, right? yeah. So the newer motherboards for AMD are going to be DDR5. They're not going to use DDR4. It's going to be a different chipset also. So the new processors are not going to fit on the old boards. Oh, okay. They're okay. kind of going over to like Intel where so they're going to start putting the pins on the board instead of on the processor. Right. So like before with AM4 bracket, you could go backwards with a motherboard if you had like a newer processor with a BIOS update. Like that's what I did when I upgraded my processor, but now you have to get a new board as well. Right, right. Well, that happens quite a bit. So, it's, you know, I'm surprised it hasn't happened with <laughs> AMD. They've been pretty good about it up to this point. Yeah, yeah. They've been pretty good about keeping it the same, but they are switching now. So they're going to be using DDR5. Okay. So uh, what would what else would be different for these type of C uh, systems where you have... Uh, these small motherboards in it. What would be the next thing you'd be concerned about? Um, usually like RAM slots, they only have two instead of the usual four. But okay, what about uh, power supplies? Would they just be the same? And It depends on the case. So some cases, um, you, you can use like the small form factor ones, it's recommended. Um, most of the cases can only use a small form factor. But there's like one or two that can use like a regular size one. Um, it's usually like micro ATX, so that would use a regular, you know, size power supply, but they use like um, SFX small form factor. Can we take a look at some of those? Sure. So I have some Corsair ones over here. Um, if we're not using a discrete graphics card, if we're going with like, let's say a 12600K, um, you don't need such a crazy like 750 watt, even 600 is more than enough. Um, but for a lot of small form factors, they don't make like a lower wattage amount, but 600 would be plenty. 
So this is an SF600 from Corsair. It's a small form factor power supply for a smaller case. I do also have from EVGA So I have like a 550, um, I have an 850, I must be out of the 650 right now, but they do make a lot of options. Um, definitely don't need an 850 for the kind of build that we're doing if we're just doing the school build. Um, like I said, if you're just doing integrated graphics, you don't need a crazy amount of power. Well, very good. Yeah. What about cost? About the same or? A little bit, um, pretty much the same because there's some sales going on right now. So okay, I would say yeah. that they're roughly the same. Yeah, I got one of those uh, not too long ago that was on sale. Okay, yeah, yeah, they're they're especially with EVGA, they're really good about pricing. Okay. And now I guess the big one. What are the cases look like? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a couple options. Let's take a look. Okay. So I have like a lot of bigger cases here. I do have some micro ATX right over here. Um, this is the Air Mini case. So is that micro ATX yeah, only, yeah, ITX type? You can put a you can put an ITX what? motherboard in here. Oh, it looks like it holds a full motherboard. The, the Air Mini it it's a lot more flexible than a lot of the other ones. I see. But if you want like a, another micro ATX, this is a smaller one. This is an ITX because it's a lot more narrow. So this is one example of an ITX. So that's ITX only. This one. It's yeah. Like a tall, like a little tower. Yeah. Here, huh? Yeah, it's called the tower. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So this one is a little taller. Um, Not a bad price either for that. Yeah, I do have a smaller one right here, Thermaltake Core V1. It's a really little guy right over here. Okay. So that'll fit nicely like if you're trying to travel with it. Um, this is the V21, which is a micro ATX. Can also which fit, is a little bit bigger, right? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, this can fit like a full-size power supply, like I was saying before, micro ATX. You can use a full-size mini ITX is usually a small form factor one. Wow, okay. Yep. Um, I think this one actually... Yeah, this one actually uses a full ATX also. So some of them you can use a regular power supply. Right, right. Yeah, that's the way mine was. I uh, I don't think you guys sell that anymore. It was a uh, Cooler Master case about that size. Okay. Little format. And that's what I built my server in originally. Okay. Yeah, most of them you, you like would use a small form factor power supply. Occasionally, though, um, the manufacturers will leave room for like a regular size one. And I think I have like one or two other options on the other side that I can show you. Okay. Also Cooler Master. Pretty good, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about coolers? As long as they're passing by it. So depending on the processor, like a 12400, it comes with its own little stock cooler. Uh, if you're mostly just doing like schoolwork, you don't need anything stronger than that. Uh, if you're doing gaming, if you got like a 12600K, you want to keep it extra cool, depending on the case. You just need to make sure that there's enough clearance for like an air cooler, like a small air cooler. Or you could do like a single fan liquid cooler right. and just like occupy one of the fan bays. Um, so I would do like even the Cooler Master well, yeah, if you wanted to keep it the that's same. That's what reminded me as you're walking yeah. by it. This is the cooler. This uh, Yeah, that's the single fan. That's actually single really good for most like smaller cases that don't have that many fan bays. Yeah, and I was able to put that into my server and it worked out pretty good. Yeah, no, they're very good. Uh, we have one from NZXT. Uh, 120 millimeter also we should have uh, some Corsair options as well so the manufacturers are making a lot of options available for pretty much everybody okay here what's that little pinky over there that's what I'm going to show you <laughs> <laughs> my granddaughter would love that yeah uh, this is a cooler master um, and our 200p so this comes in black white or pink we have the pink one on display it's a nice little case um, very portable and it should come with an extra panel if you wanted either the perforation or the or I think just like a solid one but it's a really nice little case hmm okay and this one's actually that really one next popular. to it what's that said also yeah this is the black <laughs> it has a glass side yeah, that one yeah it has a glass side or the perforation wow okay so it's nice that they give you the option if you want to switch it out you can if you want to see what's inside you put the glass on if you just for more airflow, you could put the perforator, or if you just don't care what's inside. Right, right. I don't see the case that I got. Yeah, we've been swapping out the displays. Yeah. Um, every couple months, usually. Well, those these are, are pretty small here too, but they're like old-fashioned. Yeah, those right. those are micro ATX. Well, at least this one's micro ATX. Yeah. Right. So it's another nice little option. Here's um, a nice thin one here. Yeah. So again, if, you, if you're not using a discrete graphics card, um, if you don't want necessarily like a box, you want something slimmer, not a bad option. Mm, that wouldn't fit a graphics card, huh? Um, 
Not really. I mean, it might do like a low profile one, but not for like a gaming graphics card. Okay. Any other options to this? What's this one over here? It's a nice little micro ATX one right over here. So not many ITX, it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, you can put a micro in there too, just the one that has like yeah. three or four slots to it. Yeah, you can put a mini ITX motherboard or a mic or um, a micro ATX motherboard in here. So it's a nice little little one from Corsair. Uh, it lights up, this one has RGB. If you want something a little fancier, this is a really nice option. That's why it's a little bit more money though. Okay, okay. Yeah, it does. And it's Corsair. Looks, looks nice. Yeah, and Corsair does make a quality product. I have a Corsair case myself. Yeah. What about graphics cards? Yeah. Are there any that would be more suitable for a smaller type? I have, you? I have a mini ITX one from AMD, uh, the 6400. Can't really do that much with it, obviously, because it is a lower performing card. Um, but it is decent if you want to just have a discrete graphics card there. So I should have some in the case that I could show you. Well, most of these cases would support uh, at least a medium-sized graphics card, right? Depends on which one. You could also vertically mount in some of the cases. Like the Tower 100, that's more suitable for like vertically mounting. Okay. But I prefer having like a regular full size ATX computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I like the cooling. Yeah. And I have the streamer cables, the light up RGB cables. I have that in mind as well. But yeah, that little guy right there, 6400. So that's an uh, ITX size graphics card. So that would fit in, in pretty much most, if not all, the smaller cases. Okay. I did a big upgrade. But these bigger ones might be a challenge depending on the case, right? Most of them, yeah. Like I said, unless you could find like a, a smaller case that maybe you could vertically mount, that might work out better. Well, it's a big difference in graphics cards these days. Oh, I got all of them, yeah. <laughs> got everything available and they're on sale now. <laughs> <laughs> they're coming on sale now? Oh, yeah. Every bit, everything came down. We have 3090 Ti's for like 13, 1400, and they used to be like 2200. Right, yeah. 3080 30 Ti's. 3080's. Yeah. We would go crazy for those things yeah. not too long ago. Some of the smaller ones, like a two fan one, might fit into some of these cases. They as might, well. like, like maybe a dual mini from Asus, like the little one. Right. Yeah. Right. And we've been getting in some of like the other, I guess, special edition graphics cards and motherboards as well, like the Evangelion series. Like we've been getting those in also. Okay. So. What about monitors? I mean, is there any special consideration for smaller monitors? Smaller monitor? I mean, I would usually recommend like at least the 24 inch if you want better graphics, at least. But if you're just more concerned about schoolwork, a 22 inch should be fine or a 20 inch monitor. But I have a 24 inch monitor myself. A lot of people go for the 27 because you can get the better um, specs out of it. But that would take up a lot more room on your desk, right? Yeah. Unless you mount it on a wall. Which you could do, yeah. yeah I don't know how the schools feel about those, but. Depends on the school, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, I, I think like if they're okay with it, I don't know. I don't know if they have the brackets set up or something like that. Now, a micro center can build a computer for you. Let's say a parent wants to yeah, yeah, you we know, have the service the option. How yeah. long would it take to get one built? Depends on, on our techs. It shouldn't be more than like a day or two oh, for okay. the most part. Um, there's different tiers. So like a basic part assembly without anything else, any extra software costs one forty nine. they They'll just put the PC together for you. It uh, should be like within a day, two at the most. Um, if you want them to install Windows for you as well as build it, you have to obviously purchase Windows. That is a $200 build fee. Oh, okay. And then when you get into other coolers, then the price goes up. So, like, if you wanted that liquid cooler and you wanted us to assemble it, it would cost two forty nine for the assembly. Okay. Oh, I see keyboards over there. What about is there anything special with keyboards we should be considering? If you're into the gaming or just prefer a mechanical keyboard, uh, we have some nice Razer, Logitech, and Corsair options. What about these little ones over here? Would that be something that people would be interested in, or are they just too reduced? Not really my preference. I prefer having a full-size keyboard, but yeah, obviously if you're at school, you want something maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, these aren't a bad option, but the I prefer... The pink one might go with that little, <laughs> little pink case, It probably right? would, yeah. <laughs> uh, pink isn't really my aesthetic, though, but I'm, I'm sure some people would appreciate it. Right. Anything else we should be uh, looking at uh, for a PC that would be of the smaller form factor? Um, that would be unique? Not you said two memory modules generally, right? Yeah, usually just two RAM sticks, but so I mean, you'd, you'd for someone going... go for going larger capacity ones then? I mean, for someone going to school, you don't need more than 16 anyway. I mean, I play pretty much every type of game, and I only have 16 gigs of RAM. Okay. So you don't really need much more than that. You can go 32 if you want to, 6 of 16, 
uh, depending on what you're using it for. Call of Duty prefers 32 gigs, but for the most part, 16 would be fine for like back to school. Now, in terms of disk space, now fortunately, most of them will, all those motherboards you showed us, I assume they all support. They all uh, support M.2s. M.2s, yeah. which are. Yeah, because when you go with IT, small. yeah, when you go with ITX, you don't have as many regular hard drive bays, so you're gonna want to stick with at least an M.2, um, at least a 500 gig to support your operating system, and I would say maybe like a game or two if you do plan on gaming. So most of these are M.2s here, right? It's split up half and half for the most part. So I have the Inland brand. I have the two and a half inches right here. The M.2 is right in the middle. And crucial, I have some M.2s as well. Um, like the P3 Pluses, and then I have the 2.5 inch, like the BX500 and the MX500 as well. And Samsung I have right over here, 2.5 inches are on this side, um, 870 Evos, 500 gig, 1 terabyte, they're all on sale right now, which is a really great price. 90 bucks for 1 terabyte. If you have like a 2.5 inch bay available, I'd grab one of those. Um, then I have some M.2s over here. So these are also on sale, 500 gig, 980, it's a really good sale price, I would probably grab one of those. Wow, yeah, that's a good price. Mm -hmm. And these are just the hard drives. These People are basic hard drive stores. Yeah. So if you have like a three and a half inch bay available, depending on whichever case you pick, the Seagate two terabyte is on sale for like forty-seven dollars. I have one myself. It's a really great drive, seventy-two hundred RPM. Just good for regular basic storage, like your schoolwork, photos, anything else you just might want to have around. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? Um. Antivirus, we have ESA, and it is recommended. Software wise. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's pretty much all I got. And obviously, protecting the computer, we do offer the in store protections in case anything happens to it. But it pretty much covers all of it, I think. Um, we do also have gaming mice. Uh, we have a lot of mouse pads, depending on, I guess, the desk space. Well, but they should be studying that gaming, right? Should be. <laughs> But we, we have pretty much everything available. Okay. I mean, if someone has downtime for gaming, like I said, the processors now, they're strong enough. Okay. They can do light gaming yeah. without a graphics card, but we do also have the ITX graphics cards. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Callie, for all your time again. Thanks for coming over. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll check it from here and uh, see if we can get people to you know, get what they need to get. Yep. Take care. Yeah, take care. <laughs>